Hello, I'm Melissa from Woods and Wool, and today I'm going to be sharing with you lots of work in progress projects or whips and some finished objects that I've made recently. And keep in mind, I have quite a pile here, but I haven't done one of these videos in three or four months now. So this is a lot of crochet time that's taken me to make all these things. And even then it's probably not as much as some other people out there. So this is a lot for me and I am really, really excited to share it with you. So I'm going to get started with something I just have to show you. I've shared here on YouTube. I've shared a lot on Instagram and that is my one more chapter infinity scarf. I just finished this pattern and released it a couple weeks ago and you guys are loving it so much. This pattern uses mini skeins or you can always use it as a stash buster pattern. It's great for that. And it's just a ton of fun. So you can find out more. I'll include, you know, the links for everything I'm mentioning in the description box. But this one has been such a hit and I'm so glad you are all loving it as much as I do. I also recently finished and I've shared this on Instagram, but I made a glacier beanie with a new yarn from We Crochet. It's an upcycled alpaca yarn. So it has some alpaca, I think some wool, and I can't remember, I think there's another fiber in there too, but it has been one of my favorites. I just made it for fun. I used my glacier beanie pattern, modified it a little bit so I could do this fold over brim. And then I put on this tag, which is from Shelly Can. It says, wool witch and it's kind of a play on the wool rich tags i just think it's so cute i wear this all the time on our daily walks and it's just the perfect perfect daily everyday beanie for me now i want to show you a whip that i've been working on for a couple months and <laughs> i kid you not this project took me at least a month just to pick out what colors i was going to use and the colors in what order I would put them in. So I did a lot of thinking on this one per usual. I'm I'm an overthinker for sure. So it takes me a long time to really land on an idea and start to run with it. And this one has just been a blast. So to start off, I guess I found this this yarn company at a Fiber Expo and I live here in Michigan. So this Fiber Expo was in Ann Arbor, if you're familiar. And there was this um, company there called Mitchell Wool Co. And they have their own sheep. They raise the sheep there. They get the fiber spun here in Michigan. Then they do dyeing themselves and they use all botanical dyes. So things like marigolds from their garden or from local flower farms, um, naturally sourced dyes like indigo or madder. Um, they did avocado dyeing, which as you know, is one of my favorite things in the world. I love avocado dyeing and I have a whole tutorial for that. If you want to try it, I'll include in the description as well. But anyway, so I found, I met them and it was so incredible. And they told me that they also did farm tours. Now come to learn their farm is about 15 minutes from where I grew up and where my parents live. So my mom and I took a trip there on my birthday. We got to meet the sheep. We got to see where the yarn is made. Like it was my personal dream come true. It was so amazing. And I wanted to make something with their yarn that would be just really doing it justice. You know what I mean? Like it's such a special, unique place and way to get yarn and also an investment because as you can imagine a lot goes into raising sheep so this isn't the same price as your regular old skein of acrylic yarn from michael's or joanne's right so i put a lot of pressure on myself to come up with something really good i'm going to show you a sneak peek but it's only going to get better like you're going to you're going to think that you're seeing what it's going to be but i promise it's only going to get better from this point on um, so let me just show you, I'll show you the yarns I got first. So I got this corm, it's all in DK. I got this Cormo DK. So they have brown sheep and this is the color of the sheep. It's undyed. It's really just that beautiful. All the yarns I've taken off the labels already, but on all the yarn labels, if you open up the inside of the label, it tells you the exact sheep names that made your fiber. So every single sheep there has a name. They have sheep like Regina George and RGB. And this one, uh, one of the sheep's names that I got to meet was Chester. 
and this is Chester's wool. They also have um, another one that this one is just natural. This is how the colors are with the different sheep fibers put together. Um, this one is called Farm Friends and it has a few different, I think kind of more like miscellaneous fibers put together. But one of the sheep that makes this fiber is Betty and she's been with the farm a long time. I think she was one of the first sheep they had, but so that's Cormo. This one is Farm Friends. And then the rest of the colors I have are Targi. So that's another kind of sheep that they have. And I'll show you, I have, this is the plain, I don't know, plain, natural, natural Targi color. Um, so it's a really, really beautiful, creamy, natural color. This is the avocado dyed Targi that I got. And then this one is marigold. So they use marigold flowers to dye this. And I'll give you a sneak peek of what I'm making. It is going to be a scarf, but not just like a regular scarf. I like a big scarf that's almost like, almost like a giant wrap. So this is how it looks right now. Um, we are not, we are not done. It's only part of the way done, but it's a big old scarf. You can see I like a big scarf because not only do I want to wear this on walks and outside, but I also like to wear this with like a long sleeve shirt and just kind of wear it as like a shawl. So that's your sneak peek of this. It has been so wonderful to work with. I also recently read the book Vanishing Fleece by Clara Parks. If you haven't heard of it, I highly recommend it. I loved the book so much. It's basically Clara Parks is going on this kind of journey of, of how yarn goes from sheep to skein. And she herself like takes this 676 pound bale of wool that she got from a Merino farm in New York. And she learns like all the different steps of how it's made into yarn and how much really goes into it, how much work it is. And it gave me a whole new appreciation, not only for how the yarn is made, but for American wool and also for non-superwash fibers. A lot of times I'm guilty of this. I'm attracted to a yarn because it's soft, right? And I pick a yarn because it's really soft. It feels nice in my hands. And non-superwash wool is often not the softest yarn that you're going to find. It's just not. But that's that's not what makes it amazing. It gets, one, it does get softer over time, especially if you like wash it and block it in a very caring, careful manner, because you obviously cannot throw it in the washing machine. But it's really a special fiber and you'd have to like, I'm no wool expert here, but you'd have to look into it more. But wool, when it's put in the superwash process, which uses a lot of chemicals and it's not as environmentally friendly. No, don't get me wrong. I still use acrylic. I still use non-superwash. I still use all the things, but I have this new appreciation for non-superwash in that it's so much more close to like that natural, organic, pure wool experience. Um, so it has a different bounce to it. It's going to block differently. It's going to keep those initial qualities and magical things about wool in it because it hasn't gone through that superwash process. So the superwash process from my limited understanding um, almost applies like a chemical or like plastic to the outside of the yarn, which gives it that sheen, right? Superwash wool is almost a little shiny. It's very soft and it also kind of stretches a little bit if you block it or if you wear it. And non-superwash wool is a little more matte looking. It's a little more rustic feeling, but also the, okay, I could go on and on and on and on and on for this. But another thing I learned and that Mitchell Woolco has on their yarn labels is about microns and how not all wool is created equal. So whether you're dealing with like, this is Targi fiber, this is Cormo, and then this is the Farm Friends, I can tell when I'm working with it that they all feel a little different. So I think this Cormo is the softest. And then the Targi is also extremely soft, but every sheep, every farm, every fiber is going to be a little different. And it's just really giving me an appreciation for the fact that 
nature is all different. And when you go to Michael's or Joann's and you pick up an acrylic skein of yarn, it's always the exact same. And that's what we love it for. It's consistent, it's very easy to design with, and it's also very easy for other people to find, to do substitutes. And so it's really an accessible, wonderful fiber to have. Whereas these fibers are a lot harder to find. They act differently, they feel differently, but they're so magical. I just, I'll have to talk more about it sometime, but I've just really come to appreciate everything about non-superwash wool. And I would love to use it for everything forever and ever. It's, but it's, you know what? I think every fiber has their place. It depends on the project, depends on your budget, depends on a whole skew of things. But I'm really, really, really excited to have a non-superwash project on my hook and I hope that you guys like it once it's done. And if you haven't yet, pick up the book Vanishing Fleece. It's so fantastic. It's written like just like it reads it reads like a great novel. You know what I mean? It it's wonderful. So anyway, that's that's my spiel on all of that. I got a little excited, but that's to be expected when you're talking about such amazing yarn. Okay. The next thing um, this is also very, very exciting, but I recently learned Tunisian crochet. I've been meaning to do this forever, and I finally learned Tunisian crochet. Honestly, I don't know why I waited so long, because it took me like five or ten minutes. And then I was like, oh, okay, I think I got it. So the first thing I made was a little coaster. Then I made a couple of dishcloths, and this is just the Tunisian Simple Stitch. It's so beautiful. I love to make dishcloths. Perfect size project when you're learning new stitch or new skill. And Tunisian crochet does curl, so if you're not familiar, you see this kind of curling a little bit. That's what it naturally does, but once you block it or wash it, it's, it's going to be just fine. I've made a couple other ones, and they're just fine. But I was really, really excited about that. So. Of course, I had to start another project with Tunisian crochet, and I, it's so meditative and mindless and all the things I love just about a relaxing project, and so I had to start something that would really embody that, and one of my favorite projects, aside from dish claws, is a stroller blanket, so just a small little baby blanket that you can use in a stroller. It's just a nice size. So I started this one. I'm using a hand dyed yarn from Hickory Lane Handmade. Um, you can see, I love the way that the variegated, the speckles and everything that the yarn has going on really, really shines in this Tunisian simple stitch. So I have really, really, really been enjoying that. It's also my first time, well, no, I did buy a Chowgu Tunisian hook, but I, I didn't really love it. So I got some different hooks and now I'm using this Lantern Moon Tunisian hook. It comes in a set. I'm absolutely loving it so far. It's so smooth, it's so wonderful, and it is perfect for this project. And it's also, maybe this is something I shouldn't confess, but it is the first time I've ever actually alternated hand dyed skeins. So it's always recommended if you're using hand dyed yarn like these. I'll show you. One is attached to the project, so it's a little stuck there. So these are the same colorway, but of course, hand dyed yarn is always different. Every single skein is going to look a little bit different. And so I decided I should alternate skeins so the speckling was more even in my project. So this is the first time I've really alternated skeins, and I always thought it would be a giant pain. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. And my project looks really, really good. So you can kind of see the speckles and everything is just looking really even and fun. And to alternate skeins in Tunisian is actually quite simple because I just carry the yarn up the side and you can't even see it. Actually, I think it's on this side. Okay, I don't even know. I think it's over here. Yeah, it's on this side, the first side. So it's all carried up the back. Another thing I'll have to do, a, I could do a whole series on everything I've learned about Tunisian because I didn't know anything about this. And I didn't know the back side looks completely different than the front side. Who knew? Maybe all of you knew, probably, but I didn't. 
So that's been a really interesting lesson learned. And of course, this project as well is curling a lot, but it is a non super wash wool. So I'm sorry, it's super wash. This is a super wash wool. So as soon as I give it a little steam at the end, it should relax a little bit. I'm also going to be adding a border, which will help those edges relax and not be so insistent on curling. So that is my Tunisian project. Just loving it. It's, it's a blast. It's the perfect um, Netflix project where you can just sit back, watch a show, which I don't know, have any of you seen Wednesday? Because when I say Netflix project, we just watched Wednesday and I love the show so much. I'm so obsessed with it. So obsessed with it. So if you've watched it, let me know. I'll talk about it all day long. Okay, now another project. This is one I was really excited about. I picked up the yarn. I made a swatch. It just didn't work out. It's not what the yarn was meant to be. So I caked up my Ken yarn. This is the Foggy Erin base, which is a specific base that you can only find from Jake at Ken yarn. And this base, I had the label upstairs um, separate from the skeins, but it has some alpaca in it. It's that super wash merino, and it has this really beautiful two ply to it. And it's Erin, as the name says, it's a Foggy Erin is the base name. Um, so they, these deserve something really, really special. You can just see, like, just look at that. That's beautiful. So I caked these up for something to use together and I did a little swatch and it just, it just wasn't meant to be, you know? Sometimes you just know. And so I have another idea with these. I think I wanna make um, headbands. I just really feel like they'd be such a nice headband. I really love headbands for the days where I have my hair up in a bun, which is more often than not, because it's just easy to throw on and it goes with however my hair is. So I think I want to make myself a couple headbands. And I think once I finish my other Tunisian project, I want to learn another couple of Tunisian crochet stitches. So I might use this yarn and make headbands as a way to try out some more stitches and learn a little bit more about Tunisian because it's just been really enjoyable so far. So that is that. And, and I just, I have this whole pile, you guys. There's so much here. Feels like I'm just surrounded in yarn, which is wonderful. Um, I recently got my order from Sorella Yarn from the Ottoman New York collection and made a vintage flannel beanie. I love this pattern. I love this yarn. So this is the yarn from the Ottoman New York collection. The colorway is called Jazz in the Park. And this pattern is really designed. This is my pattern. It's really designed for variegated yarns with a lot going on. So this yarn itself has a lot of different colors. The colors change a lot within, you know, the skein as you're working it. And I love that this pattern really balances out all those colors and just look how like even and beautiful it looks. There's not like a lot of color pooling that always drives me nuts. And if you did have color pooling, you can obviously kind of cut your skein and, and work around that as if you want to avoid it. But um, I just, I haven't worked up this pattern since I designed it and I was really reminded and gave myself a whole new appreciation for the design and how well it paired with yarns like this. So if you have some wild yarns in your stash, try out the vintage flannel beanie pattern. Um, it's really perfect and I feel like it makes those colors very wearable. As someone who tends to stick more towards neutrals and earth tones, it makes things like this very wearable. And I have an olive winter coat, so that's kind of why I got the yarn. The pom-pom is actually also from Sorella Yarn, and it's the perfect size, perfectly poofy, perfectly poofy. Sometimes if you have old fur pom-poms that have just been sitting around for a little bit, I will use a blow dryer on a cool setting and give them a little blow. But this one actually just came out of the package that fluffy and was that perfect, so. If you need a good pom-pom, you can get it in your next order from Sorella. So yeah, that's Jazz in the Park. 
Now, I had a little bit of extra yarn um, after I made that beanie. The beanie uses about 200 yards of worsted weight yarn. And so I had a little bit left over. I was watching Wednesday on Netflix and I decided, well, I already have my yarn here. I already have my hook in my hands. So I made a couple coasters with it. This is the Pep Coaster. It's a free pattern on my blog. But if you have some scraps laying around, I made two of these. Um, with what was left over from my vintage flannel beanie. They're just really nice to throw on a coffee table. I find I'm always happy to have a coaster within, you know, within reach when I'm on the couch or watching something or at my desk. So the pep coaster, free on my blog. And if you don't wanna make a coaster, another really, really great idea with um, yarn scraps is making pom-poms. And you can make a garland with them, or I really like to wrap gifts with them. So I'll use yarn instead of ribbon on a gift and I'll put the pom-pom on instead of a bow. It's just something fun and cheerful. And sometimes when I give them to people, they keep the pom-pom and they, you know, hang it up somewhere. You can throw on a keychain. Just a fun way to reuse some yarn scraps if, if you have a bunch laying around. Okay. I also recently made a Pico dishcloth. This pattern is on my blog. I love making dishcloths. I feel like dishcloths are, you either love it or you just have nothing to do with it. And I love to make these as gifts, um, especially if you're limited on time or you don't know exactly what the recipient would like. It's just a really nice little crochet project that they can keep in their house and appreciate. So a little Pico dishcloth as a gift for someone. And last but not least, this project is very, very exciting. So earlier this year when the Color Theory Collection launched, that is the Worsted Way acrylic yarn from Two of Wands and Lion Brand that they collaborated on. It's kind of the little sister to the Hue and Me yarn. I saw the yarn line launch and of course I needed some. It's just so beautiful. Alexi from Two of Wands does an amazing job curating the colors. The yarn itself is gorgeous, and so I knew I had to make something with it. I wanted to make a garment, and I did. So I made this top. Um, it's so cute. It does not do it justice, me just holding it up. You really have to see it on, but when I'm holding it up, you can see how simple it is. So it's a couple panels seamed together. Boom, you have the cutest top, and I have not released this pattern yet. I was intending on making it last summer and designing it, but the summer just went by way too fast. So I decided just let's take a breath, let's finish it, let's make sure we get it perfect, and then I will test it and release it for next summer. So now the plan is I'm going to be doing a pattern test for this early next year, so early 2023. If you're interested in testing it, keep an eye on my Instagram because that is where I do my pattern tester calls. And I love working with all kinds of people for my pattern tests. It really gives me a great, um, what's the word? I don't know, a wealth of feedback. I like all different perspectives. Um, whether it's your first top you've ever made, whether you're new to crochet, whether you've crocheted forever and made a hundred sweaters. I love the feedback from everybody. So I will be doing a pattern test for this in the next few months, hopefully. And I, okay, so when I saw the color palette, I wanted to branch out from my normal neutrals and do something a little different. And so I did something kind of fun. I feel like it's very retro feeling to me, but then I wanted to make a couple adjustments to the pattern and I wanted something that I could really mix and match with other things in my wardrobe. And I realized that I think I needed colors that were really within my comfort zone. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? I needed my comfort colors. So I ended up ordering more yarn to make another one of these tops because it was so fun to make. And I thought, no big deal. I'll just make another one real quick because who doesn't have time to make another top? But it's actually a really quick pattern. So I just ordered yarn to make another one. And I haven't decided on the colors yet. Maybe by the time I post this, hopefully I've decided, but who knows. 
So I'm debating between these three colors together. Um, I can't remember the name of this one. This one is Raisin and this one is Moonbeam. I love those. And my other choice of colors is still Raisin and Moonbeam and then Himalayan Salt. Ooh, ooh, those are both so good. So I like to wear a lot of like earthy tone pinks. Um, I like rust colors like this. Got my earthy tone pink here. And I'm thinking, you know, what's gonna go best with jeans? Or I wear a lot of olive. I like to wear a lot of olive green like pants or shorts. So I'm really having a very hard time deciding which set of three colors. At least I have two out of the three picked out. I mean, honestly, that's an accomplishment in itself. So we'll see. This one I've already used part of, so that's why this skein looks a little messy. It's gone in and out of a few project bags. Um, I used this on the first one, at least part of it on the first one that I made. So <sighs> I don't know if you guys have advice. Let me know and keep in mind this is going to be more of a summery top so right now it's wintry it's gray every day but in summer like what colors you know am i going to be drawn to am i going to wear i don't know okay <laughs> i have to put that down because otherwise i will keep debating all day but that was everything it felt like quite a bit to show you but it was really really fun just to sit down and share Sometimes it's very hard over on Instagram to constantly um, share everything because if I'm crocheting at the, you know, in the evening, it's dark outside, so I don't always get a good picture. And then suddenly a week has gone by and I'm already on to making something else. So it was really, really fun just to sit down and show you everything I've been working on. Um, if you wanna find me between now and my next video, hop over on Instagram or subscribe to my email list, which is, you know, all on woodsandwool.com or at woodsandwool on Instagram. And just thanks for joining me. This was a lot of fun and I hope to see you again next time.